Glenn Campbell was more than just a country and pop star. He was an American music legend whose career spanned six decades, crossing genres and captivating audiences worldwide. Campbell's journey from humble beginnings to the top of the charts is a story of immense talent, perseverance, and an undeniable passion for music. While I tell you about his life, I'm going to show you some images of his incredible home in Malibu. You're going to see some really cool snaps, some of which you may have never seen before. Before I begin, please like and share the show and subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell. Now please join me around the campfire. Glenn Campbell's Malibu mansion was a grand estate, befitting a music legend. The country and pop music icon, along with his wife Kim, purchased the four-bedroom, six-and-a-half-bathroom, 6,540-square-foot Tuscan-style estate in May of 2005 for 3,425,000 smackaroos. Perched on just over an acre of prime Malibu real estate, the home offers sweeping views of the Pacific Ocean in the distance, which you got to admit is kind of awesome. Inside, the mansion exudes luxury, featuring an elegantly designed living room with stone flooring, exposed beams, vaulted ceilings, and one of the home's three fireplaces nestled in a cozy corner. The estate boasts a beautiful kitchen, a multi-car garage, a library, an office, and a dedicated music and media room. Ornate ceilings, arched doorways, and finely crafted railings add to the home's refined yet relaxed atmosphere. Many rooms open onto shaded terraces and patios that overlook the beautiful backyard, which descends to an infinity pool and spa. An outdoor living area complete with trellis and a grand fireplace enhances the estate's charm, while a prominent stone turret adds a distinctive architectural flourish. Now, while you look at more images of his former mansion, I'm going to tell you about his life and career, because it was really amazing. Glenn Travis Campbell was born on April 22, 1936, in Billstown, Arkansas, a small rural town that shaped his early life. Raised in a large family of 12 children, wow, I always wondered how people dealt with so many brothers and sisters. That's a lot. Campbell's childhood was one of hardship marked by poverty and a relentless work ethic instilled by his parents. His first guitar, a $5 model from Sears, remember Sears? Is Sears still in business? Was a gift from his Uncle Boo. Seriously, he had an Uncle Boo. If you had an Uncle Boo, or maybe have one still, let me know in the comments below. Who we'll recognized Glenn's raw talent early on? Self-taught, Glenn mastered the guitar by listening to radio shows, and by the age of 10, he was already performing on local radio. In 1958, Campbell moved to Albuquerque, New Mexico, to join his uncle's band, the Sandia Mountain Boys. It was here that Glenn honed his skills, not just as a guitarist, but as a vocalist and performer. His talent soon outgrew the local scene, and in 1960, Campbell made the pivotal role to Los Angeles. He quickly found work as a session musician, becoming a sought-after member of the famed group of studio musicians known as the Wrecking Crew. The Wrecking Crew alone deserves their own video. I should jump on that. As part of the Wrecking Crew, Campbell played on some of the biggest hits of the 1960s, including songs by the Beach Boys, Frank Sinatra, Elvis Presley, and Phil Spector's Wall of Sound Productions. His guitar work was both versatile and innovative, making him a hidden force behind the music that defined a generation. Despite his success as a session musician, Campbell yearned for the spotlight. His big break came in 1967 when he recorded Gentle On My Mind, a song written by John Hartford. The song's success catapulted Campbell into stardom, earning him his first Grammy Awards and solidifying his status as a rising star in country and pop music. Over the next few years, Campbell's career soared with a string of hits that crossed over into the pop charts, including By the Time I Get to Phoenix, Wichita Lineman, and Galveston. These songs, penned by songwriter Jimmy Webb, who unfortunately wrote that horrible MacArthur Park song, you know, about the man or the woman who left a cake in the rain. I mean, my God, when I first heard that song when I was a kid, I thought, there's no way this is a real song. This is like a Saturday Night Live skit or something. Worst song ever written. I'm sorry, I know Jimmy Webb's a talented dude, but my God, the worst song ever written. Oh, if you ever want to torture somebody, play them MacArthur Park. Oh, all right, let's move on. <laughs> anyway, by the time I got to Phoenix, Wichita Lineman and Galveston became instant classics, showcasing Campbell's smooth, expressive voice and his unique ability to connect emotionally with his audience. In 1969, Campbell took his talents to television with a Glenn Campbell Good Time Hour. Doesn't that sound like fun? A primetime variety show that further showcased his versatility. The show featured musical performances, comedy sketches, and guest appearances by some of the biggest stars of the day, 
including Johnny Cash and Neil Diamond. The Good Time Hour not only cemented Campbell's status as a household name, but also brought country music into mainstream American culture. It's probably not fair to call him a country star. What do you think? Do you think of Glenn Campbell as a country star? I think Glenn Campbell was just Glenn Campbell, right? The same thing with Johnny Cash, right? What do you call him? Country? Pop? I mean, Johnny Cash was just Johnny Cash. Everything he did was awesome. And so, okay, so we had a lot of success with country music, but I don't know, Glenn Campbell? I think he was just Glenn Campbell, you know? Anyway, the show's popularity was undeniable and it ran for four seasons, drawing millions of viewers each week. It was during this time that Campbell became known for his signature style, the flashy rhinestone suits, the boyish charm, and the impeccable musicianship that made him a true entertainer in every sense of the word. I mean, honestly, if you know anything about guitar playing, Glenn Campbell was incredible. And he was friends with everybody, and everybody loved him. For crying out loud, Alice Cooper, I think, was one of his best friends. Wouldn't you like to hang out with those two for a while? In fact, they used to play golf together. How weird is that? In 1975, Campbell released what would become his most iconic song, Rhinestone Cowboy. Listen, I know you're eager to go play that song. I know you are. Please do me a favor, finish watching this video, and then you can play it, okay? The song's themes of perseverance and the highs and lows of show business resonated deeply with Campbell and his fans alike. Rhinestone Cowboy shot to number one on both the Billboard Hot 100 and the country charts, earning Campbell Grammy nominations and firmly placing him at the peak of his career. The success of Rhinestone Cowboy was followed by another smash hit, Southern Nights in 1977. Southern Nights was a joyous celebration of Campbell's southern roots, blending country, pop, and soul in a way that few artists could achieve. Campbell's ability to cross genres and appeal to a wide audience made him a trailblazer in the music industry. Behind the glittering facade of his public persona, Campbell faced personal struggles, the pressures of fame, a battle with alcohol and drugs, well, mostly cocaine, and turbulent relationships often overshadowed his professional success. In the early 1980s, Campbell's career took a downturn and he found himself at a crossroads. However, Campbell's resilience shone through. He embraced sobriety and recommitted himself to his faith, crediting his Christian beliefs with helping him overcome his darkest times. However, in a 2008 interview, Campbell said that he and his wife Kim had been adherents to Messianic Judaism for two decades. And so I suppose that kind of helped him out too. In the late 1980s, Campbell made a comeback with hits like Still Within the Sound of My Voice and She's Gone, Gone, Gone. His music took on a new depth, reflecting his personal journey of redemption and self-discovery. In 2011, Campbell revealed to the world that he had been diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. But instead of retreating, he embarked on a farewell tour, determined to share his music for as long as he could. The Goodbye Tour was both a celebration of his career and a deeply emotional farewell to his fans. Despite the challenges of his illness, Campbell continued to perform with a spirit and joy that moved audiences, reminding everyone of the power of music, especially his, to transcend even the most daunting obstacles. In 2014, Campbell released his final studio album, Adios, a point and collection of songs recorded during his farewell tour. The album was a fitting tribute to his legacy, showcasing his enduring talent and the warmth that made him one of music's most beloved figures. Sadly, Glenn Campbell passed away on August 8, 2017, leaving behind a legacy that few could match. He was more than a singer and a guitarist. He was an artist who broke barriers, bringing country music into the mainstream and influencing generations of musicians across genres. His hits remain timeless, his voice unmistakable, and his guitar work, and his impact on music indelible. Interestingly, Glenn Campbell died with significantly less money than expected due to a combination of financial mismanagement, legal battles, and personal expenses that drained his wealth over the years. At one point, it was said that he was worth $50 million. But despite earning substantial income during his peak years, including an estimated $500,000 annually in the late 1960s and 1970s, back when half a million dollars annually really meant something, Campbell faced severe financial difficulties. In 1982, he filed for bankruptcy, citing $14 million in debt due to unpaid taxes, credit card debt, and legal judgments. His ex-wife's excessive spending was also noted as a contributing factor to his financial woes. Well, that really had to suck. If you have an ex-wife who engaged in excessive spending of all your money, kindly let me know in the comments below. 
Campbell's financial situation worsened after he was diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease in 2011. As his illness progressed, his ability to earn from touring diminished, and his medical and caregiving expenses escalated, further straining his finances. In his final years, Campbell's estate planning decisions sparked disputes within his family. He excluded three of his children from his will, leaving most of his estate to his wife Kim and their children. This decision led to legal battles that paralyzed the estate. Unfortunately, I know what that's like. Further complicating the distribution of any remaining wealth. The ongoing legal disputes also likely contributed to reducing the value of his estate at the time of his death. Ultimately, these factors, along with poor investment choices and ongoing legal and family issues, left Campbell asset poor and cash poor at the time of his death, with his estate estimated to be only around a million bucks. And when I say only a million bucks, you know what I mean. I mean, come on. We're talking about Glenn Campbell for crying out loud. He should have died with a lot more bread. But either way, Campbell's story is one of extraordinary talent and human vulnerability. He was a country boy who rose to stardom, a session player who became a superstar, and a man who faced his struggles with grace and courage. Above all, Glenn Campbell was a testament to the enduring power of music and the resilience of the human spirit. Today, Glenn Campbell's music continues to resonate with fans old and new. His songs tell stories of love, heartbreak, and hope, capturing the essence of the American spirit. As we remember Glenn Campbell, we celebrate not just the artist, but the man who, through it all, remained true to his love of music and his journey. Glenn Campbell's incredible career stands as a shining example of what it means to be a musician, a performer, and, I think we could all agree on this, a legend. So, what do you think of Glenn Campbell? Were you a big fan of his music while growing up? Are you a big fan of his music today? What do you think of his incredible Malibu mansion? If you are rolling in dough, would you live in a place like that? Try to guess if I would or not. Yeah, I would. Kindly remember to like, share, and subscribe, and hit the notification bell because there will be more shows like this one, and I hope you check those out too. Please check out the links below to learn how to support my research and productions. This channel is sponsored by CampfireShop.com, where you could order the highest quality and exclusive candles, herbal supplements, teas, and more. I would also appreciate it if you could become a member of my channel and or join me on Patreon, where you could watch exclusive videos of cool places that I've been to. You could also leave a super thanks in the comments below. Kindly be kind to all of our fellow Earthlings and please do not harm them. They don't like that. Remember, for the benefit of compassion for all living things and their own health, brilliant people throughout history were kind to all of our fellow Earthlings. So you can be too. And please do yourself a favor and go to a local shelter and adopt a cat or a dog or both. You and they will be very glad that you did. Until next time, I wish you safe travels on all your journeys.